So I was playing Fallout 4 as part of a larger project I'm working on and something started to feel a bit off about the gunners and the locations that they occupy. Something always struck me as a bit fatalistic about them, a finality to their role in Fallout 4, but it was always this ineffable quality, something that really defied all logic or description. However, after much divining animal sacrifice and prayer to the god of millennial false hope, Elon Musk, I think I've deciphered the code. Not the actual code of the game, what do you think I am, some pervert dev? That's gross, you need to get your minds out of the gutter. No, I mean the intent behind the gunners, their actual role in the commonwealth and the likely canon outcome of their fate post-game. So if that sounds like fun to you, go ahead and put on your thinking caps and stock up on Mentats because I'm Grey, you're watching Grey Gaming, and today we're delving into the gunners and their destiny in Fallout 4. Any good investigation needs a jumping off point, a starting line, a cryopod to climb out of. So we'll go ahead and start right there. By now you probably know the opening chapter of Fallout 4 by heart, so I won't focus too hard on the sole survivor's journey to the vault and back again, and instead start after rescuing the Quincy survivors and bringing them back to Sanctuary. It is here that we get our first introduction to the Gunners. Preston Garvey tells of the Gunners' siege of the town of Quincy and how they schemed and double-dealed their way past the town's defenses and massacred the town along with most of its defenders. From here you would be forgiven for thinking that they may be the big baddies in Fallout 4, but after a little more progress, you start to discover that while the Institute actually seems to fill that role, the Gunners are still serious beefcake, and you're going to bump heads with them over and over again in your quest to well, whatever the actual main quest of Fallout 4 is, I'm not quite sure about that. So far, there's nothing really out of the ordinary as it pertains to the Gunners. Plenty of games have minor antagonists. I mean, Fallout 3 has the Talon Company or Regulators, depending on whether you have good karma or bad. New Vegas has the Powder Gangers and Great Cons. You get the idea. But I mean, we've seen the thumbnail and very non-clickbait title, so obviously there's something here that leads yours truly to suspect that the Gunners are destined to bite the radioactive dust by the end of Fallout 4. So what exactly is going on with the Gunners? Before we can address that, we need to discuss a tiny little in-game mechanic. You see, the world of Fallout 4 doesn't stay put. People are constantly moving around, piling their junk in the corners, leaving their jet on the coffee table, peeing in refrigerators, you know, treating the Commonwealth like one giant Airbnb. Clearing a location of super mutants, ferals, raiders, and yes, Gunners doesn't guarantee that it will stay cleared. In fact, the majority of locations in Fallout 4 don't stay empty for long. They repopulate over and over again. For the purpose of this video, we'll call this happy little source of unending busy work Location Reset. But not all Location Resets are created equal, and Location Resets happen to come in a variety of flavors. There's the traditional Full Reset, where all enemies return to a location, all containers are packed full of various sundries, and junk is once again spread all over the shelves, floors, toilet bowls, etc. A little more restrictive from the Full Resets is what I'll term Limited Resets. With Limited Resets, all enemies come back and junk is once again spread everywhere, but some specific containers may not reset. An example of this is pretty much every single super mutant den, where the meat bags never reset, but most other containers do. The next level down from here are partial resets. Enemies may return to these locations, but the containers will often fail to reset, and in more extreme cases, junk items will also not be scattered back about the site. Often in these cases, the weapons that were dropped by the last group of inhabitants that we wiped out will still be laying there, and the new inhabitants will pick them up as well, leading to the somewhat comical occurrence of an NPC packing around 15 combat rifles at once. The final stage is the flat out dead location. No enemies return to these sites, no containers are restocked, and no beer bottles or coffee cups are chucked back into their proper corners. The location simply ceases to be of any concern or further utility to the player. So what does any of this have to do with the gunners? Well, let's take a look at the 13 marked locations in Fallout 4 that the gunners occupy. Five gunner locations don't really have have much value to offer this conversation, but I'll discuss them briefly just for the sake of completeness. Mass Bay Medical Center, at first glance, doesn't seem to serve as an important outpost for the Gunners, as there are no named Gunner officers here and really no information as to why the Gunners are occupying this site in the first place, other than the fact that it's a defensible location in downtown. If you can take out the Gunner Commander before he can get to his T-45 power armor, there's a free suit in it for you, but other than that, there's not really a lot of importance in this area. In addition to the hospital itself, there is also a pretty sizable Gunner presence in the surrounding ruins and a number of unmarked locations. 
Hub City Auto Wreckers. Like Mass Bay Med, there isn't much going on here. They are commanded by a Captain Bridget, and they possess Fat Man and Missile Launcher Overwatch, so it's not likely that this is just a token outpost. However, there are no special lore-related items here that suggest why they are here, other than, once again, it's defensible and makes a good outpost. Also, just as a side note, it's one of the few locations where a combat armor helmet spawns without an NPC, so for those of you who feel inclined, it's a good place to acquire such a piece of headgear. Postal Square. This location is a minor outpost at best and only has about a half dozen gunners. Nothing all that interesting, really, other than it's the only known case of the gunners keeping livestock, as they do have a pet Brahmin. Mass Pike Interchange. This location has a fairly significant gunner garrison, has a suit of leveled power armor if you can get to it before their commander, and is fairly well defended. If you're sent here by our favorite Merc with a mouth, no, no, not that one, getting closer, but let's fast forward about 10 years. There we go. If McCready asks you to help him settle a score, Mass Pike Interchange is home to a pair of named gunners, Winlock and Barnes, but since they're never referred to by rank, it's probably safe to say that they aren't actually that important to the organization, so once again, we just appear to be working with a defensible outpost, and nothing more. Ah, Quincy. That place that paved the way toward our promotion to general faster than Napoleon himself. No, not that one. You know what? Forget it. Quincy is home to a gunner named Tessa, who isn't held in the highest regard since she used to be a raider, and Clint, who isn't held in the highest regard since he used to be a Minuteman. Clint is responsible for selling out Colonel Hollis's unit to the gunners and causing the Quincy Massacre. Both of these fine, upstanding citizens wear power armor, though Tessa's is just an empty frame with a raider arm attached, and Clint chucked the helmet for his T-45 so every one can plainly see that he wears his Minuteman cap. Pfft, poser. Quincy is well fortified and serves almost like a secondary HQ due to the rather large garrison that they maintain here, but really there isn't anything special that they do here other than purchasing nearby lore-breaking Indiana Jones references. All five of these locations are fine, they fully reset every so often, and are a real pleasure to go hunting in over and over again, but that's only five out of 13, so what about the others? Well, here's where it starts to get a little more convoluted. Every other location sees the gunners fail to maintain their position in one way or another. One of the more interesting cases of the gunners being done away with is the case of Hardware Town. Interestingly, the first time we arrive at this location, it's actually occupied by raiders who try to lure the Soul Survivor into Hardware Town where they have an ambush waiting. Once the Soul General Sentinel Heavy Sleeper Director agent clears the place out, gunners will very shortly make themselves at home here. It shows that the gunners are an organization that is trying its best to expand rather than remaining stagnant, though there's no clear motive for their move into Hardware Town. However, once the conflict between the Brotherhood of Steel and Institute starts to heat up, Hardware Town actually trades hands yet again, with the Gunners being forced out by either the Institute or the Brotherhood, depending on who you sided with. So chalk it up for location number one that the Gunners lose to outside forces. However, it is interesting to note that this location is lost due to actual narrative written into the game rather than a simple restriction to the location reset function, leading to an inference that the Gunners are gone. Now let's talk about Hallucigen. This building was the pre-war headquarters for a company that focused on less than lethal weaponry and chemical warfare, so you could probably guess this isn't a homey little posting. The Soul Survivor arrives at this location to find the gunner stationed here so completely whacked out that they are gunning each other down in droves. Although there are multiple radiant quests that send the Soul Survivor to Hallucigen and under some circumstances it can partially reset, it's probably no surprise that the gunners actually decide to stop sending teams to secure Hallucigen. Add another point to Gryffindor, I mean against the Gunners. Mass Fusion. The Gunners occupy this location early in game, but by the later stages of the main quest, the Gunners are wiped out by either the Institute or the Brotherhood of Steel, depending on who the Soul Survivor sides with, and it's probably not a surprise that the Gunners never attempt to retake it with the all-out battles that raged here after it changed hands, adding another to the bad day ledger for the Gunners. Green Tech Genetics, now that one's a wild ride. When we finally make our way into this sprawling multi-level medical research facility, we find the place is currently under attack by a courser, and all those gunners he bypasses on his way to his target on the top level are now on high alert. It's one of the more fun missions in the Fallout 4 mid-game, but boy howdy do the gunners take a hit here. Dozens of them get to test out the gunner's employee life insurance policy during this shooting gallery of a mission, and wouldn't you know it, this becomes a dead sight from here forward. No gunners here, mate. 
Now let's talk Vault 75. This place is creepy to begin with, just because of the vault techie things that happened here in the past, but these fellers ain't playing around. I mean, not one of them have probably tried out that underground swing set. After the sole survivor does a bit of re-education down here, there's not a gunner in sight, and as it so happens, never will again. Another point of note is that if the sole survivor waits until late game to explore Vault 75, they will arrive to find it under assault from Institute Synths. I'm not 100% on whether this changes to the Brotherhood of Steel, depending on player actions, but it's probably fair to say that regardless of player intervention, the gunners living in Vault 75 are living on borrowed time. This location fails to reset completely. So for every gunner stronghold that is healthy and fully resets after we've gone home with a pack Brahmin's worth of loot, we've now identified another location that's permanently lost to them. This is already pretty concerning for the gunners considering that none of the other minor factions suffer permanent territory loss and casualties in this way, but we aren't even done with the list of gunner locations yet. The Salem Museum of Witchcraft is a place few people ever remember for its gunner presence, mainly because by the time we find it, there isn't one. The gunners are sort of beside themselves. Okay, bad pun. I probably can't show too much footage of the gunners here because, you know, monetization concerns, but suffice it to say, even after you deal with the very unhappy death claw that John wicked its way through the squad of unlucky gunners in search of its would-be child, this place falls silent and stays that way. Vault 95 is yet another location that suffers from reset issues, but at Vault 95 at least, it's only a partial reset rather than a completely dead site. The gunners return over and over again, however, the junk items littering the place and container contents never return, so I guess you could say that the gunners here have supply problems? Regardless of the actual cause here, it's still a location where the gunners are never the same after the sole survivor gets through with them. And finally, we come down to the Big Kahuna, the grand finale, the Gunner's HQ at GNN Plaza. For the most part, this location is fine, other than the named Gunners who for obvious reasons never respawn, except for that one glitched playthrough I had where they actually did one time. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah. The main floor and second floor seem to be okay. NPCs respawn, junk repopulates, and containers are restocked. But the basement is a different story. I can't think of a single reason why this level would be set up that way, but the basement only partially resets, with gunner NPCs returning, but with junk and containers remaining forever looted. So even the gunner's headquarters itself is never able to return to the state that they were in before a 210-year-old Salisbury steak ruined their day. I wish I could say that the DLC treats them any better, but alas, Nuka World adds several gunner locations, and Nuka World Transit Center becomes a dead site. Manchester Mystery Mansion, dead site, and freaking haunted. The Gauntlet, dead site, though that's probably for the best. Nuka Cola bottling plant, dead sight. Come on, sometimes a feller just wants grilled Nukalurk fillets. Is that too much to ask? Only the Brad Burton overpass fully resets, and that one's wonky because the roadside lookout is scripted so that their turrets are hostile to the gunners, so the lookout actually has to take out their own defenses here. So with all of these locations taken into account, let's check the scoreboard. Out of the 18 marked locations that were able to encounter gunners, 10 of them become dead sites. Never any reason to ever return to them. Two of them only receive partial reset, suggesting that there's been some form of permanent damage to their position at that location, and one, I will remind you, is their headquarters. And only six, six out of 18, one third of all gunner locations experience full resets, with five of them being completely unimportant to their organization's continued operation. This does not appear to simply be forgetful Bethesda or shoddy writing or scripting, rather this appears to be a pretty clear message of intent from the writers and developers. The main story always seems to come back to the Gunners at one point or another, whether it's Preston's shame for his failures in Quincy, McCready's pride as he works tirelessly to save his son, the Institute's massacre of the Gunners at Green Tech, the Brotherhood's massacre of the Gunners at Mass Fusion, the Gunners' massacre of themselves at Hallucigen. The Gunners seem to be everywhere, but never in a position of strength. They're present anytime something important happens, but the result is always the same, regardless of what major faction is currently on top. The Gunners are losing losing territory, losing supplies, losing people. It's subtle, almost too subtle for Fallout 4, but the consequence seems to be fairly definitive. It's actually a little sad in a way. The Gunners are a faction that's at the peak of its influence when we arrive in the Commonwealth, but its sun has already begun to set. The fact that the Gunners are slowly dissolving into the background is completely lost to the majority of players, for no other reason than they've been conditioned not to look into the fine details of the game. They know if a detail is actually important, 
the little green pip on their HUD will mark it, an entry in their quest log will badger them about it, and an NPC will exposition them over it. But for those with lots of time on their hands and nothing better to do with a perfectly good weekend, or several for that matter, the message is clear, there's no future for the Gunners. They were once the Commonwealth's top dog, stretching from Quincy in the south to Salem in the north, Hub City in the east, to Nuka World in the west. They once controlled territory in every corner of the Commonwealth and beyond, and were feared by all. From raiders and triggermen, to wasters, scabbers, and farmers, everyone knew to stay clear of the Gunners. But those days, it seems, are over. Their numbers dwindle as their territory collapses in on itself. Their once comfortable lodgings now feel claustrophobic, stifling, and insecure. A new age is dawning for the Commonwealth, and with this evidence speaking volumes of Bethesda's intent for a future beyond Fallout 4, it appears that the Gunners are not likely to make another appearance. Perhaps they will continue to languish on in the mode of the Great Cons, or possibly enjoy a resurgence like the Enclave. But regardless of the case, I think their role as a major player in the Commonwealth may well and truly be over. I'm interested in hearing about any things you've witnessed that confirm this theory, or contradict it. Heck, I'm open to new ideas. Unless you're going to be a party pooper who just wants to complain about bad writing leading to bad fan fiction. There's already a place for that. If you stuck around until now, well thanks, it means a lot. I know it might seem like I'm overanalyzing things here, but you know what? Sometimes a good conspiracy theory can be cathartic. Anyway, with all that said, stay safe, and remember, if it don't reset, it's probably a boring location to visit a second time.